how's everybody doing out there? Uh, this is Craig at Stumpy Grump Scale Speed Shop and the Revel 1971 Olds 442 that became a tribute build for our um, Basset Hound Willow who passed away on August 16th um, is done. Um, I want to start by thanking everybody that expressed their, their thoughts and kind words and prayers to, to the family. Uh, we took it kind of hard, and it's still pretty pretty tough from time to time. She was a special girl, and a beautiful girl, and I only hope I did her justice by, by this build. So let me get the camera turned around, and we'll do the unveiling. Okay, so here's the Revel 1971 Olds 442W30 that I built as, as a tribute to to our best son Willow, who passed away on August 16th while I was building it. Um, pretty special, means a lot to me. What I wanted to do was get the, the custom Willow license plate, the Michigan plate with the um, Mackinac Island Bridge background on it. But my printer's on the fritz, and it's probably going to be a month or two, or at least, before I can get another one. And I didn't want to hold off the reveal or anything like that that long to do it. I'll move it around to the back. You see the back, the old 442, the, the kit decal that I left on. I put on there until I can get my custom ones made. But um, Also, what I did was the kit exhaust pipes were were not very good for some reason they don't have the the um trumpet looking exhaust pipes i did the best i could i used a 1 8 inch styrene tube i drilled out to make these a little bit wider and a little bit thinner around around the outside edge to make it look more like it and then i angle cut it a little bit to give it that slash look and I tried to give it that uh, splayed open trumpet look, but I did okay, but not not great. But I still think they look better than the, than the kit supplied. Um, you can see them look better than the kit supplied exhaust tips, maybe. I think they do. And also, on the instruction sheet, I'm going to use the instruction sheet here. I see a lot of a lot of talk about the, the rear wheels, and you can kind of see it a little bit. These still aren't perfect, but they sit too far back in the wheel well. Um, the fronts look pretty good. I, I don't think it's got anything to do with the fit issue with the, with the firewall or radiator support. What I think it is, is I think it's just this rear end part here. I use the four-speed transmission. I don't know if that's the common or if it fits better with the automatic transmission. But by the time I put everything on, I already had this engine and everything glued in place, and I wasn't going to take it back out. So I, I trimmed a little bit off the front of the drive shaft here. Also, when I put this piece on, I noticed I trimmed a little bit off the fronts of these, these this part here. When I put the rear end on, and I'll flip the car over and show you. Right there, where it goes in there, I trimmed that off, and it seemed to help quite a bit. And when I glued the piece on, I made sure and pushed the rear end forward until the glue dried. And that really seemed to make a difference to me as far as centering the wheels and the wheel wells. That might be the issue, or it might not, but that's just what I did. So maybe heads up for those of you that have, haven't built it yet, if you notice that problem. I painted this one in Tamiya TS29 semi-gloss black. It laid down real nice and smooth. Uh, I couldn't find a TS14 gloss black, so I used a semi-gloss. Uh, turns out it doesn't really matter when you, when you gloss it out anyways. Uh, I used TS13 Tamiya gloss clear. I put one coat of clear on before doing the decals. Really, really tricky decals on the sides here and the hood stripes and your back stripe here going across the trunk line there. 
Uh, my previous video, the uh, second update I did on this, I showed how I did the decals, kind of. Then I sprayed on two more coats of the Timia TS-13 Clear. The Firestone Wide Oval are decals for the tires. You get center cap decals. You get the 442 badge in the front and on the sides. I put the, I, I put those on after I cleared it, waxed, uh, wet sanded it, polished it, and waxed it. I did all that last with the emblems. Bare metal foil for the trim. All the trim and stuff. I did brush paint Molotov Chrome for this little piece right there on the cowl there. Um, door locks are separate, or doors handles are separate pieces. That's pretty neat, pretty nice. And you also get the little rocket decal for the rocket emblem in the front. So pretty good, pretty good stuff there. You do have to paint your tail lights. Okay, so I'll zoom in on the engine here. And I did add some heater hoses. You see right there. Air conditioning line is supplied in the kit. couple of nice decals included to help detail things your radiator support and your air conditioning part there I'll swing it around the other side I did add this hose here running from the valve cover into the air cleaner assembly and there you see the other heater hose going into the back of the block for the Oldsmobile Swing it back to the other side. And you can see the other hose I ran from the valve cover to the air cleaner assembly. And spark plug wires. It's a really neat, nicely detailed engine compartment in this one. Really nice. Swing you to the interior, and I did add door locks, as you can see. Okay, and all this wood grain is a decal, or decals. Focus it in a little bit better, as you can see. The door handles and window cranks I did use. Molotel chrome on. You see the dash. Same thing. Wood grains decals. Everything else is Molotel chrome. I'll swing it around to the other side. You can see the gauges are decals. The horn button's a decal. Molotel chrome, I brush painted that on the center console. And you can see the back seat and door panel pretty good this way. But this, this was a really, really nice kit. Really good fit, except for maybe that little bit of issue with the, with the back end as I bumped the camera. Um, no complaints or anything like that. The interior goes together great. The door panels all line up good with the, buck, with the, with the interior to make the bucket and the seats. All that stuff fits in really, really nice. Just a, a well done kit in my opinion. I, I'd love love this car. Would love to have a few more to do, and even the, the convertible 
pace car convertible. That'd be really nice to have and do too, but those are kind of unobtainium right now. They're, they're not many around and they're commanding some pretty high prices. So maybe they'll re-release that too. Are you listening, Ravel? That'll do it, I guess, for this one. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Um, probably already have more subscribers now than I expected I ever would. <laughs> Didn't know how, how good this channel would, would go. I'm up over 400, so thanks for that. I appreciate it. Having lots of fun and, and all that. And hopefully you guys are enjoying my videos. Um, thanks for watching. I should maybe have a, a kit review or a unboxing of the MPC 1979 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am coming up. That's going to be my next, at least one I paint. I'll probably end up building it too. So be on the lookout for that one. Um, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. This is Craig at Stumpy Grump Scale Speed Shop, signing off.